so let us start our uh, class today and let us see our schedule page so according to our schedule i think we will finish selection structures today and you see that there is nothing due by this weekend but quiz three is due this weekend uh 9 15 all quizzes are due midnight okay and remember that your test one will be 12 or 13 who is matches in your lecture 13 next friday is time you need to bring your pen or pencil if you use pencil that's good but please make sure that your pencil is dark enough okay so you will uh, provide your test paper you don't need to bring any paper uh, exam test will be close book close friend close everything you cannot use your headphone earbud or anything okay if you are caught with uh, a headphone on your ear even if you do not listen anything you will be penalized okay and for the test we will cover whatever we from today's class to today's class okay and i also i just sent you uh, test one study guide on d2l uh, announcement so d2l announcement if you go to the d2l announcement then you will see test one study guide okay so let us start our lecture today and then if you have any questions related to a test Please bring your question in the next two classes. Lectures so we will discuss. Uh, and on more, uh, there is another announcement. In order to see all of your content, module two, module upward, you need to have person for both your syllab theory and lab courses. I did not know that restriction. Sorry both your theory and lab courses if you 100 percent for the policy and syllabus quizzes for both your lecture lab classes but you do not see your content other module please send an email to uits university it services that building or stop by over there that building is down to downstairs on this building that office is downstairs of this building. So if you go outside and not, where uh, through the CCSC building, you will see that they will help you. They will reset your. They may reset your uh, uh, settings. Uh, I heard that a few people are facing that kind of issue. I'm not sure that uh, why that is happening. So in our last lecture, we discussed, uh, we were discussing selection, selection statements. We were discussing selection statement. Selection statement are used to select a statement in order to imply one or more conditions Okay, so that the next statement or next block of statement either can be executed or skipped. Sometimes we need to take decision whether we need to jump from one line to another line. We stated that unless stated otherwise, all of the statements in a program will be executed serially one by one from the beginning, top to bottom. Sometimes we may need to skip one or, or more or a few statements. Okay, we may need to repeat it. We will discuss that next week. So in order to do selection operation, there are some selection operations. We use if, else, else, if, if, else, if, and switch. 
In our last lecture, we were discussing if and. Okay, so these are actually very interesting. These are the interesting thing, and these are the foundation of programming. If you understand this, then your programming concept will be clear. Okay, please give attention so that you become clear on this. So before we go through this, actually, uh, let me review this, the relational operators that we discussed in our last lecture. Relational operators are to relate, find the relation between two operands, whether one apparent is equal to another apparent, or not equal to another apparent, or greater or equal, or less or equal, something like this. This one is used for not, and this one is not equal, and this is the equal operator. Please give attention. Yeah, this is not assignment operator. We see the equal, only equal sign. Single equal is called assignment operator. That is used for instance to assign, like for instance, this is the pseudocode format. In this, in programming, we will use num one equal to five. That is, we we say in English num equal. But in programming language, that is actually num on assigned to five. Okay. And we also discuss logical operators. There are three basic logic operators, and, or, and not. These logical operators, op operators are used to perform logic operation, logic circuit operation. Yes. A not operation is used, logical not is used to perform Boolean not. Logical not. It inverses a Boolean value. If you say not true, that means false. Not false, that means true. Okay, and logical and operation is used to perform an operation of a series circuit that says multiple conditions to give true result of a logical and operations, all condition must be, be true. And another one is logical or operation. To be true of, of a logical or operation, either of the input needs to be true, either or both. Okay, this is why we say or. And there is another one, ex or exclusive word is not not prime, but exclusive or is used to do if same x and y value are same, then it is zero. It's false. If mismatch, then give one. We will maybe discuss later exclusive or operation. Fairly, we, we mainly need not and and one. Anyone has any question about this? So far, we discussed in our last week. Thank you. Okay, so we discussed this. Okay, one thing and again. So if, in order to use if, we give a condition over here. Condition may be very simple, or it may be a large statement. This is called a Boolean statement, a logical statement, or relational statement. Whatever this statement, how large or small it is, that that does not matter, but the matter is that result will be final result will be either true or false. If this result becomes true, then it will execute the statement within this if. If it becomes false, false, then it will skip this. Okay, so these are the actual operators in most programming languages, Java, C sharp, and C plus plus use but for instance these are in in python although we are not discussing python in python there are some few different for instance and this one is two ampersand this is called a in the end like in, in english a in the end and or u r o r and this is not a not t dot okay we discussed the precedence so this right side will be executed first and it will give a result. Then the left side will be executed. This result will be fine. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the logical if statement format. We give the condition over here. If the condition is true, then it goes to a block. If it falls, then it jumps this block. Get out, it skip this block. This is, we, are, we discussed this until this in our last lecture. So this is a, a problem. I asked you to try this. Anyone had a chance to try this? No one? Okay, please try it. You may get a question in your test like this. Okay, you have already, we have over here, we have pseudocode over here, we have some code in, in pseudocode form. This is, okay, so this is the structure of if L statement. Let us start with if L statement now. So, let us go to, by the way, if you go to repl.it and then type in at my name, my first name of Tar, then you will be able to see all of my programs that I discussed. Okay, so you can see any of this program and you can copy and you can uh, add M O K T E R, my first name, Mokhtar. Okay, what we were discussing in our last lecture. Okay, we are discussing C sharp operators. Example one, we are discussing this program. Mm -mm. Sorry, my program was not saved. Okay, that's good. So this is a C sharp program, right? We have console.write line. That means this is a C sharp program and main in C sharp main A B is an upper case. Let's start from our last lecture. What we did, we checked whether a number or an odd number. So this is for instance, this is my variable integer x. Actually, let me assign it as 15. So how do we check whether a number is an even number or an odd number? We use module, right? If x this is my modulo operator to x modulo 2 equal equal 0 then what we will get if i have single statement then this this uh closing brackets is optional okay then otherwise we will need this so if then we will cite the number the number plus x plus is even, okay? This is very simple code. If we say, if we find this value true, it will give you the true or false result. Let us check this, whether it gives true or false value. So let us do this and let us print only this part. Only this part, let us print this part here. Okay, we will print that part over here, x modulo two equal equal zero. Okay, so then, my program code says, if x modulo two equal zero, then it will give me this. So do you, what do you think that I will get output from this program? What will be my output from this program? Output from this program. It's going to me show me only true because this line is false, right? It is showing me false. Okay, and 
this one since this is false so this line will not be executed okay so then what we should do if this condition is false then we will use another another something else we use else for instance or we will use else okay else is very simple that means condition is false then we will say the number is we can say not even that means what right okay we will get the result the number 15 is not even you can give this way what you can say is what whatever you like to see so please give attention to this statement we use string concatenation symbol plus operator over here in order to give some you know that how do how do i write my coder i gave extra space here after num num so that i can get an extra space here and here we enclose this part within double code this is a string but here we did not enclose x because we want to place this x by its actual value okay, so this is why we put x outside of double quotation so this is why x you will get is actual value okay so now this program will work for any kind of integer number for instance if i change okay 15 to 150 then it will show me the number 150 is even so one single prog program will be good to check any number within this integer range anyone has any questions too far so far everybody understands this good. Uh, from this point we will use else if else if is used to put multiple conditions okay we see that for if we gave only one condition but if we have multiple conditions, then in order to give multiple conditions, we use, uh, okay, by the way, else is used, I discussed already, else is used if the if condition is false. Okay, then there is another thing, else if. Okay, if there are multiple conditions, there are multiple conditions more than one condition to be used then the second or third condition goes to else position here so for instance if we want to say if, if x modulo 2 not equal to 2 not equal to 0 then we know that my number is what right okay then else not if neither of these conditions neither if these conditions meet then we will go to the else block else means if nothing happens if if this condition does not match and this condition does not match then it will come to here okay so what can be Oops, the number um, say I can say x is not valid. Okay, so if we run this program, for instance, okay, if we run this program, we will get same output. We uh, okay, sorry. What is that? Lines. Oh, I'm sorry. We get else over here. <laughs> My mistake. Okay, sorry. Thank you. So if we run this program, I should get same output. Uh -uh. What is that? 
Sorry, why did I get this one? Uh, what is happening? This compiler is not, is not okay. Let me get an, another new PL corrupted. Line 10? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Line 10. Anything else? Let us run this. Hmm. Okay, the not operator cannot be applied to operand not operator here. Okay, why did you do mistake this one? Why it here? Okay, I was doing hurry. Okay, I got it. So this true over here, true is the result of this condition. So here Result is uh, my condition is true, so I got this line. The number is even, right? 150. So, but in case if I change this to 150 instead of 150, if I make it 151, then I should get result the number 151 is what? So, in this the second case, my else if condition met, right? So, this this is not zero. That this let me check this. If I say not equal to zero over here, and then it will say this one is true. So which condition, whichever is true, it will execute the corresponding block. If or else if, it will execute the block if the corresponding condition is true. Anybody has any question too far? Okay. If you understand this, then you got the foundation of programming. You should, you can do as many LC as you need in between this. Okay, so you can add more LC, more LC here. And the condition is that you cannot have else if without if. You cannot have else without if. There must have an if. Okay, this else if or else this follows the previous if. Let us give a very large number. Expected that this number is out of range of integer, right? Let us see what is my result, expected result. Okay. This compiler, some compilers will give you warning message or error that is out of range, okay, but it does not give you any range. Okay, that is good. Integral constant is too large. Okay, if it get up, it does an error. Okay. So this <laughs> exceeded the range, right? Now it should be okay should be even. Okay, let us see. Anyone has any question too far? So if you understand then, then as many else if you need, you can put within, in between if and else. So this is the flowchart of if and else if. So for if and else if, it will check the first condition. If the first condition is true, then it will execute that block. If that condition is false, then it will check the second condition. If the second condition is true, then the second block will be executed. And but if that second condition is false, then it will go to the third condition. Okay, if the third condition is false, then it will go to the next condition. Something like this. But the one thing that it will, for instance, if it gets this condition, for instance, let us give, give, give one other, another, you see that what I'm doing over here? Uh, 
for instance let me do is not what i made a little change i made both these true yes what is the Use else if to use if to use if multiple conditions. So here we use to put one condition. We have four conditions. The other condition we will do else. Okay. And so is that if we have more than one condition. First condition will go here. Okay. So the second condition, subsequent condition will go else. All of these conditions. All of these conditions fail. For this program, let us see that I get two true statements. Here, x if equal to zero, x modulo two equal to zero, the number is even. And I say it if x uh, equal to zero. Yeah. Okay, so then again, another equal to zero. If equal to zero, modulo two equal to zero, then the number what? what? That is true also. Let us try to run this program. What will happen? Okay, so you see that still, although I have two conditions true, okay, this is also true, but it executed only the first one, right? This is the nature of if else if. Okay, if it gets a condition true, execute the corresponding corresponding block and it will get out from this all of this condition and it will not check the subsequent conditions. You would understand this? What I mentioned here. So if even there are multiple conditions true. If this is true, right, for an even number, and for this is also true, so then whenever it gets the condition first, as soon as it gets the condition true, then it will execute this corresponding block and it will skip all the remaining else if and else. Please remember this one. This was why this statement was not printed. Okay. Okay, so again the Previous program, it has redefined here. Write a program to convert user input. You need to take user input, use input method. In Java, we need to use scanner method. And C sharp, we use system.in, C. To take your input a temperature in Celsius, and you need to convert it to Fahrenheit and display the temperature. To the user on the screen. Okay, and these are your program. Issue a heating warning. Temperature is at least 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So you need to use this one. Okay, so the program is program code is here. Okay, you see that if my you are in, we are taking input in Fahrenheit. Condition if my input Fahrenheit is greater or equal to 90 degrees, then it warning. Else if, if it is greater than 80 degrees, then it says it is warm. And else, that means it is less than, sorry, else if, that is, else if 70 degree, greater than 70 degree, then it will give this one. And else, that means your temperature, if your temperature is less than 70 degrees. Okay, in this program, let us spend one minute for this program. So in this program, we have to check for greater or equal sign, we have to give the highest value first. Because, you know, if a number is, for instance, 95, if my temperature is 90, 
is greater than 95. What is the 95? So 95 is greater than both 90, 95 is greater than 80, 95 is greater than 70. You know that, right? Okay, give attention. I told you, for instance, if I enter 95, this temperature, for instance, 95. Then we know that 95 is greater than 90, 95 is greater than 80, 95 is greater than 70. But since I want to take greater or equal sign, so I have to check the greatest value first. I have to check the first. Okay. So in this case, since my temperature is 90 degree, 5 degrees, even that is greater than 71, 70, and 80, and 90, in this case, only will be printed. If I input 95, this one will be skipped. The reason is, can anyone please tell me the reason? Yes, that is why the first condition, so it will skip this. Okay, but if you do miss water, for instance, if you give 70 first over here and 90 not the last. It will satisfy that condition. What is your question? Okay. Please do some practice. Okay, and, and vice versa, reverse order. If we use, sometimes if you need to use less or equal to sign. Okay, then you have to give the lowest number first. Do some practice, please. Be good practice for you, okay? Anyone has any question so far? I like everybody understand this. If you get a question in your test like this, something like this, I like everybody to, to correct. We have time in the next two lectures. If you find any issue, I will be waiting for you in my, during my office hour. And even if I not, every day will be someone there will be a professor or there will be lab instructor to help you if you do not understand. Okay, so this is uh, in actually in programming code we will write. Okay, then the last thing we want to discuss today is the SUI statement. Okay. How many minutes I do have? Minutes. Ten minutes. Okay, let me take a break. One minute break, and then in this one minute, I will tell you a story. Story is that my story is that if anybody here has not seen how to do fishing, how to do fishing, if you have not seen, you have never seen how to do fishing. Anybody? Everybody saw that, right? I think everybody know how to fish. Right. Even if you have never done that, you saw that, right? Okay, my, my story is that no matter how many fishes are there in the pond or a lake or a river or a water, no fish will jump into your bucket. Right? You have to catch the fish. Right? Even there, even your lake or pond is full. If you know fish will jump into your pocket or into your you have to catch, right? You know my story is that behind the understand that everything context to my story. We will be waiting for you in our office. Okay, so we have fish. We have fish, okay? We never know it jump. Okay, we wait for you. We we'll be waiting for you. Uh, professor, poor professor, I'm all of them. And then lab system. And then other resources. Maybe YouTube and other many other resources. A lot, you will find a lot of online resources in addition to our but you have to catch.
Okay, let us go to the our last topic today, the SUI statement. The SUI provides another way to decide which statement to execute next. Okay, maybe it's not clear yet. Okay, the SUI statement evaluate and express to match the result of one of several possible cases or causes. Each case maintains a value and a list of statements. The follow up control transfer to the statement associated with the case that may. Okay. Maybe these are not clear, so I will show this in a live program. Let me see how many slides I do have. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, twelve slides. Okay. Okay. I need uh, you in order to discuss this i need everybody okay to give full attention okay if you have your computer or device open please shut it down five minutes okay so we found we noticed at least one limitation of if else if and else at least one limitation we found over here right what can anyone please remind me that limitation what is the limitation we found here yes yes okay so we cannot have multiple statements right we cannot execute using if else if else we cannot execute multiple statements with multiple true statements right that is the limitation that we found here for instance this one we have both this condition true and this was also true we got this one true but previously for instance this one equal to true is not what okay we saw that only this this condition this statement not executed even this this was true it was not executed right this was a limitation that we cannot have multiple true conditions only one of them needs to be true okay this can be resolved, this issue can be resolved using switch. Yes. Another if, so that if will be uh, another if, that is not associated with this, this if. Okay, else if is, 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 is a switch Okay, Swiss is used as an alternative to if else if, but it has an extra power that it can have multiple true statements. Okay, but in general, also Swiss can be used to replace if else if. Okay, Swiss works with like this way. This is the format. You have to switch and you have to give a over here this is called sometime index variable and you have to put case one that means if the value of variable is one then it will execute this program block okay and if the value is true number two then it will execute this and if okay okay this is this is the part of this one not if the value of variable is three, then it will execute this. Okay, and select like this one. And the all the way last, if none of these these values match with the variable value, okay, then it will execute the default block. 
Okay, one thing that there are some break break statement as well as right after the the end of this case each uh, case block. Okay, this break is used to get out from this switch. For instance, if my case one is true, okay, then if you want to do not, if you want not to check the remaining cases, then we need to use break. If we use break, then it will be similar to if and if. We skip break. Then what will happen if we do not use break? Then it will go. It will check the second condition. Okay. And if you do not use this break, it will go to this condition. Okay. So sometimes break is optional, but remember that in your test, you may have some break intentionally. Test whether you understand the effect of break. Okay, for instance, in your test, you may not give this, for instance, a break. That means in that case, you will to, you have to remember that you need to check that next condition, next case. Okay, so how many minutes? Okay, like this is the uh, flow chart of is there will be single condition, and this single condition will have multiple value one, value two, value three, up to value n. And if value one is true, matches with if the condition has value one, then it will go to this block, and other will be skipped if we use break. If we do not use break it will check the other conditions as well as okay, let me see if i have a program to discuss with in the next okay for this program this record you see that there is a break over here right this break has impact okay and this is actually you see that if there is no break to check this next is as well as Okay, and you see the for the default block there is no break. Break is optional for the default. Usually for the default one you do not have break. For the okay, and you see this this one. It's called index variable. This variable must. an example of a switch like the previous program as that was written in if else if then this is same thing using a program using, using this so what it will be doing here for instance entering your 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 number in fahrenheit that is converted into type casting of what is called over here into integer number by 10 integer division remember that give focus here everybody please this will give you a result either okay so divided any number is divided by 10 integral division it will give you a result integral result not decimal result since my condition is integer it will give you a number for instance if you enter fahrenheit 95 the 95 divided by 10 integral value will be 9 not 9.5 you remember that here for instance if you give 95 92 93 90 even 99 it will give you result 9 because the whatever their value you will get even 9.5 but it is the condition is integer so integer value will contain only integer result so your result will be your your this division result will be either 9 8 9 10 6 7 8 9 10 something like this okay 
So do practice of this program and if you have any question or issue about this, please bring your question in our lecture. Thank you so, thank you everybody, thank you so much. And in this lecture, we discuss if, else, if, else, if, and so statements. Okay? Thank you so much.